This is not in the magazine either. If you like it, AC, you can have it in the next one. Um, <laughs> this is um, one of my goals for this year has been to stop writing poems which are just about my own personal angst and try to write poems about other trans people as well. And that's who this poem is about. It's about someone called Fallon Fox, who's a trans person who also fights in MMA, mixed martial arts. And he's got a lot of shit for this on the grounds that apparently if you're taking female hormones, nevertheless you somehow apparently have incredible huge levels of testosterone which make you some kind of terrible monster, which is bollocks, as we explain <laughs> in the poem. Um, possibly a slightly unfortunate choice of word for nonsense there, so I'll just say that's bullshit instead, because you never get enough chances to say bullshit, really. Um, there is a chance to say bullshit in this poem, which I didn't take. Um, so, yeah, this is called um, Valen. I haven't come up with a more complicated title for it yet. Um, I was on the bus to work when I first heard of Fallon Fox and I shivered as I read about the battles she was fighting inside the octagon where she faced other women and outside it. Where bigots who had not done anti-androgens tried to claim she had unfair advantages. The same old crap about our larger handedness, our denser bones, our greater levels of testosterone, pub or machismo. Given pseudo-scientific sanction and cachet, generalization draping like a negligee over the phrenologic nonsense with which Cesare Lombroso flared bourgeoisie with what they all already claimed to know. But understand, I'm only on finasteride and I'm already weaker when I exercise. And still, I couldn't fight within the guidelines Fallon has to work inside. I'm still not girl enough to set as my commissioners. They'd insist that my transition is insufficiently advanced for competition while Fallon is legitimately thought feminine enough because she is feminine enough. And the only thing about her that is intrinsically tough is that she knew that this would happen when she stepped inside a cage and yet she still threw her hands up and walked right into the rage because a samurai goes forward. That's the essence of jiu-jitsu. You get right inside and neutralized before they get to hit you and you prove them wrong even as they contend your gender is an issue because you fight girls that are bigger. You fight girls that are quicker. You take on girls who stand there with a more masculine figure than you ever had. Establishing this edge they claim you had is fiction and you still win fights twice by knockout, one time by submission, but even as I read about the fights that she was winning, I felt the same ice knife of fear daggering within me as I feel when I stand here. And I wonder if you hear me because the queers, the secret counterpoint we're hearing, underneath the clapping and the cheering is the thought we might be overreaching and secretly you're hoping someone teaches us a lesson. Secretly you want to see us wrestle with oppression like a jobber on the undercard. Sure, hope sports get you hot but secretly you really want to see us being squashed and so I knew that they were waiting for the fight that Fallon lost. And yes, they got it. At the fists of Ashley Evan Smith, Fallon went down. They rubbed their hands. They got their wish. But that was not enough. They had to go the whole damn hog. Ashley started claiming she had been the underdog, despite the tale the tape told. And the bigots all connived in it. Because they wanted to maintain that she had slain some kind of giant when she only beat a woman. Did no more and did no less. It was one L in Fallon's column. Nothing else. Losses are taken in the early stages of a fight career, and hers is nascent. What defines the cost of loss is how you take it. And Fallon took it better than the victor did her victory, because she used defeat to teach that she was reaching for equality, the right to be judged solely on the quality of muscle and technique, the way it should be in a ring, a cage, or any competition. And the logic of accepting that fight's TKO decision is that the loss renders the victory legitimate just as our life acquires its value in our living it without allowing bigotry to limit it. Thank you.